Hey guys, it's Anna from Bright Lane Gardens. I have a quick video for you today because I'm going to show you a process that is relatively fast to do, and that is going to be hilling my potatoes in the containers. So on my right side here, I have the potatoes that I potted up in my last video. These are about four weeks old at this point, and to be honest, I let them go a little longer than I typically would before hilling. We had to open the plant nursery last weekend, so I was all hands on deck in that process, but I've got some time today, so I'm gonna go ahead and get these guys hilled. If you remember from the last video, these are purple potatoes, red skin potatoes, and I do have one batch of sweet potatoes that isn't quite ready to be hilled yet, so I'll show you what that looks like. This foliage is huge. We're talking 12 to 16 inches and I usually like to hill these guys when they're about six inches tall so I'm a little late on this process but we're going to do it today. These guys are my red skin potatoes and these are a little more appropriate at that six to eight inch height. I do have one really tall guy there but we are going to hill all of these containers today. And these little guys here are my sweet potatoes. So as you can see, they're significantly smaller. My second sweet potato on the right-hand side there is super small. So I'm actually not going to hill these guys today. We'll wait about another week and see if we can get more foliage out of them first. Potatoes are really unique to grow because they actually grow kind of opposite of other plants. For other plants, we're usually putting our seed or our seedling right at the surface of the soil or just below the surface of the soil with the goal of the roots digging down deep in search of nutrients and moisture. With potatoes, we actually start them at the very bottom of our container or we dig deep and plant them in the ground. And then we continue to add soil on top of that as the plant grows up. And what that enables you to do is the roots are gonna stay nice and low down here, but this plant is gonna produce tubers, which will turn into your potatoes. And those will grow up the plant stem as we continue to add more growing material on top of our original layer of soil. Now, when it comes to soil, potatoes are not exceptionally picky. The key thing to keep in mind is you never want anything too tightly packed when it comes to potatoes. So you want a nice fluffy mixture that won't compact down against those tubers and prevent them from growing into their full size. Today we are using the same soil blend that we used when we first planted these potatoes. So I'm starting with my base of potting soil. This is just a well draining soil mix that I use for the base of all of my plant nursery plants here. We are going to amend it with a little bit of these worm castings for some added nutrients. And like I mentioned in the last video, worm castings are kind of like compost on steroids. A little bit goes a long way. So I love amending my soil, especially my organic vegetable plants with this mixture. And last but certainly not least is my secret ingredient, which is that organic cedar mulch. This is naturally acidic and it is completely organic. This will do a very good job of helping my soil to retain moisture. And of course, we'll add back some organic nutrients back into the soil as it breaks down. One note on the mulch, definitely make sure that you are using an organic wood mulch that is not dyed. We just don't know exactly what's in those dyes, so we want to make sure that we're never using that on any of our edible plants. We're going to start with our red skin potatoes here. As I mentioned before, this foliage is way bigger than I would usually like to have it before we start to hill it. Um, fortunately, I don't see any tubers starting to form at the bottom there. The highest risk we run from not hilling in time is if you have potatoes down there that are exposed to the sunlight, they'll turn green and we certainly don't want to eat green potatoes. So fortunately, I don't have any potatoes forming in this bucket yet. We're safe to go ahead and hill. I'm going to set this guy right down in my way in here and I'm basically going to start by just backfilling this probably about eight inches with my well draining soil mix in the wagon here. Remember that you want to layer this in nice and fluffy. You don't want to pack anything down. Your potato plants really like a nice loose soil to be able to expand into. Definitely okay to cover those first few sets of leaves. We really only want the very top leaves to be sticking out when all is said and done. I have a few handfuls in there, so I'm now going to start amending with my wiggle worm castings. You can't overdo it with the wiggle worm castings. However, they are a little pricier than compost. So just for the sake of cost efficiency, you don't want to overdo it. You can't overdose the plants though with this type of nutrient, which is why these are so great for potatoes. All right, I did a few handfuls of my wiggle worm castings. So now I'm going to finish topping it off with my soil. 
And for my very last layer, I'm gonna do about a two to three inch layer of this degraded cedar mulch. And this is just going to sit right on top of that soil. I'm not gonna to try to mix it down into the soil at all. This is just a nice fluffy layer. It does a great job of insulating that soil and preventing it from drying out. Potatoes really like a lot of moisture, but they also don't like any sitting water. So there's definitely a secret ratio of water to dryness that the potatoes prefer. If you do have too much standing water or if your container doesn't drain fast enough, you might run the risk of root rot, which will of course rot your potatoes. All right, so at this point, this container is filled almost completely to the top. You can see that that mulch layer comes just about an inch below the surface there. I might be able to hill this guy one more time. It kind of depends on how much that soil decides to settle down into the container, but typically I'm limited by the size of my container on how far I can hill this guy. Let's move on to our next one, which is in a larger container. There'll definitely be space to hill that one one more time. These guys here aren't nearly as big. These are my purple potatoes, which are literally purple inside. They're so cool. But these guys are a much more appropriate size for my first hilling. So this is a really good example. I'll show you, we're not gonna do it nearly as tall as we did on those last ones because we still want the top surface of these leaves to be sticking out of the soil. Starting with that same process, I'm going to start filling in my first layer with the well-draining potting mix. Now I have one potato vine in here that is really tall compared to the other two. So I am gonna hill him up just a little bit taller, but I wanna make sure that I'm not at risk of covering the shorter two completely because if I block off those leaves from the sun, then that plant will fail to continue to grow. Adding in my worm castings now. Just gonna do a nice even layer of these. Okay, and this is where I'm currently at. So this smaller plant that's on my right, right here, is really only sticking out of the soil about two to three inches. So at this point, I need to stop with my soil and worm castings. I'm gonna do about a one inch layer of my mulch, and then this will be all set for right now. I am gonna add a couple extra handfuls of mulch just around this taller plant here in case we get any tubers on that guy that wanna pop up close to the surface. Again, our goal at this point is to prevent any tubers from having access to sunlight so we don't turn those potatoes green. I have hilled this one as much as I can. So at this point, we're gonna set this guy aside and let him grow for a couple more weeks. Once I see more foliage on top, that's when I'll go ahead and hill the rest of the container. I'm gonna repeat this process with my last remaining plants. And then my very last one here is my sweet potato plant. And as I mentioned, this guy right here is really, really small. So I'm actually gonna hold off on hilling him for about another week. Let's see if we can get a little bit more foliage off of this guy. This is pretty classic for me. Anytime I'm planting regular potatoes and sweet potatoes around the same time, my sweet potatoes are always a few weeks behind my regular potatoes. So don't be alarmed if your sweet potatoes aren't maturing quite as fast. My task for today is complete. My potatoes are all hilled. They have plenty of room to grow up in that soil and mulch that I just added to add more tubers and more potatoes. Now I'm gonna keep an eye out and make sure that they're still getting enough water. So look at those leaves, make sure they're not turning colors on you. Make sure they're not looking wilty or droopy at all. Potatoes wanna be watered pretty much every day, especially in a warm environment like this hoop house here. In another two to three weeks, I'm going to come back out here and I'll plan to hill these guys one last time, getting as much soil as I possibly can into those containers. From there, all of my potatoes will be housed in the bottom section of these containers and we'll plan to harvest those in a few months. I'll check back in when I'm ready to hill these guys for a second time. But in the meantime, please don't hesitate to leave any questions that you have for me on growing potatoes in the comments section below. Our spring prep continues here at Bright Lane Gardens and we have so many videos coming up ahead. If you enjoy watching content like this, please take the time to like and subscribe to our channel. It seriously helps out small businesses like ours so much. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to tune in with us today, and I sure hope to catch you next time. Bye-bye.